the National Broadcasting Company presents Joel McRae in Tales of the Texas Rangers. From Hollywood, another authentic reenactment of a case transcribed from the files of the Texas Rangers. Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Texas, more than 260,000 square miles. And 50 men who make up the most famous and oldest law enforcement body in North America. From the files of the Texas Rangers come these stories based on facts. Names, dates, and places are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Case for tonight, Death Shaft. It is 9.30 a.m. November 18th, 1941, in the Big Bend country of West Texas. J.C. Wilford of the Bureau of Mines and Fred Blaisdell are winding up a narrow dirt road toward Blaisdell's abandoned mine in Black Hawk Canyon. How long did you say it's been since you operated your mine, Mr. Blaisdell? I never have operated, Wilford. It was left me by my brother when he passed on. Oh, I see. I always understood there was ore here if you had the money to get it out, but... I didn't. So I just let her sit here. Haven't even been near the place for, oh, two years anyway. But lately I've been reading that the government's anxious to get some of these mines going again. Mm-hmm. So I got in touch with you at the Bureau of Mines to see if you think it's a worthwhile proposition. Well, if it looks promising at all, we can make a thorough survey, do a little diamond drilling, and see what we've got. And then if it looks good, you think the government will loan the money to operate it? That's something I can't answer. All we at the Bureau do is make the recommendation. Hey, pretty desolate country around here, isn't it? Yeah, I see. Yeah, here we are. Oh, uh, is that the entrance to the mine ahead? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Mm, all boarded up. And padlocked. Guess my brother put that door on the entrance to the shaft when he quit working the mine. Yeah, I got my key. Funny. What's the matter, please? Key doesn't seem to fit. Well, you sure it's the right one? Yeah. I... Hey, this isn't the same lock on here. What? Well, there was a master padlock on here before. Now it's just a cheap one from a dime store, looks like. That's strange. Who'd want to switch locks? Why? I don't know. Somebody must have been snooping around up here. Wait. Piece of iron bar line over here. See if I can try that lock on. It's a fairly new lock by the look of it. Yeah. Okay, let's open her up. Yeah, I got the flashlight. I better go first. Okay, Weapon. So wet in here. Yeah. These drifts collect a lot of moisture when the mine's not in use. Please do. Matter with them. Look, they're on the ground in front of us. Holy smoke, a skeleton. The clothes just about all rotted away. And a, a different padlock on the entrance. It looks like somebody didn't want this skeleton found, Wilbur. Yeah, and if you take a look at the skull, you'll see why. Hey, it's all bashed in. It sure is. The club or a rock by the look of it. Yeah. Whoever that was, looks like he was murdered. <laughs> Two men notified Sheriff Benson, who requested help from the Texas Rangers. Ranger Jace Pearson was assigned to the case, joining the sheriff and two men at Blaisdell's mine. Hmm. Pretty damp, Sheriff. Sure is. You men touch anything in here? Uh, not a thing, Ranger. After I pried off the new lock, we come inside. But just as soon as we saw the skeleton, we got out in a hurry and called the sheriff. Isn't that right, Wilford? Yeah, that's right, Ranger. Well, there it is, Jace. Yeah. Skull sure is bashed in. It's pretty hard to tell how long he's been dead, Jace. Yeah, remains would deteriorate pretty fast in this dampness. 
And as far as telling who it is, clothes are all rotted away, so the same would go for any papers he might have been carrying. Just a minute, Sheriff. Hmm? Look. These loose rocks on the side here. All right. Looks like a leather wallet. It is. Pretty well preserved, too. Sure, sure. It was a little higher than the skeleton up out of the wet. Yeah. Pretty lucky for us. Looks that way. Any money in it? No. Just some papers. Hmm. Might have been robbery. Killer took the money, then tossed the billfold away. Can you make out the writing on any of the papers? Gilbert W. Madden. Madden? Yeah, name mean anything to you, Blaisdell? I was just trying to think. No, no, I don't I don't remember ever hearing it before. How about you, Mr. Wilford? Being from the Bureau of Mines, you probably spend a lot of time around this part of the state. You ever hear the name before? Madden. Sounds a little familiar, but I, I can't seem to place it, Ranger. I'm sorry. Okay. I guess that'll be all for now. Let's get back outside. If we want signed statements from you, you can drop around the sheriff's office and make them. I'll be in this afternoon, if that's okay. Sure. See you then, Blaisel. Come on, Wilfred. I'll give you a lift back to town. All right. You through here, Jess? Not quite. Take this broken padlock along. I don't want to look at this hasp on the door. Well, I doubt if you can tell much from that. It's all scratched up where Blaisdell pried off that padlock. Yeah, I know. There's one thing sort of puzzles me a little, Sheriff. What is it? This new lock isn't rusty enough to have been out here in the open for very long. Well, what do you figure that means? I don't know until I can get some idea of the approximate time of death. Come on, let's get back to town and start checking on Gilbert Madden. See if we can find out how long ago he was murdered. Back at the sheriff's office, I checked through the missing persons reports and found one on Gilbert Madden filed by his wife eight months before. Mrs. Madden was promptly notified and requested to meet us at the sheriff's office for routine questioning. Have a seat, Ms. Madden. Thank you, Sheriff. Sorry to be asking questions at a time like this, ma'am. That's all right, Ranger. I don't suppose there's any doubt it was Gil. I'm afraid not, ma'am. We found his wallet, and the lab confirmed the identification by means of the teeth. Well, I felt for some time that Gil must be dead. In a way, it's almost better knowing instead of wondering. I know. Mrs. Madden, our lab's trying to establish the time of your husband's murder. Now, according to our information, you filed this missing persons report on last March 23rd, a little less than eight months ago. That's right. What were the circumstances surrounding your husband's disappearance? Well, uh, Gilbert was a mine broker. He made trips in the mining country every now and then. He planned to be away for two or three weeks, so I decided to visit my relatives in Kansas while he was gone. I see. When was that? Right around the first of March, as I remember. And how long were you in Kansas? Three weeks. Did you hear from your husband during that time? Oh, yes, I did. I got a letter from him just a couple of days before I was to return home, saying he would meet my train. But he wasn't at the depot when I arrived. Called all over town trying to locate him, and then when I couldn't, I got worried. The next day, I filed a report with the police. Well, let's see. That would make it about the 20th of March when you got that last letter from your husband. That means he was alive up until the time he mailed it, anyway, which would be about the 18th of March. Come in. I left my statement with you, deputy sheriff. Anything else? Oh, I reckon not. Mrs. Madden, this is Mr. Blaisdell. How do you do? Miss Madden, Mr. Blaisdell owns the mine where your husband's body was discovered. Oh. Uh, sorry to make your acquaintance under this sort of circumstance, Miss Madden. Uh, sheriff, I'm sure you told me where this mine was over the phone when you notified me, but what with the shock, I don't seem to remember. Oh, my mine is over in Blackhawk Canyon, Miss Madden. Blackhawk Canyon. Does that mean anything to you, Miss Madden? Oh, Willie. Who? Oh, Willie. He lives up in Blackhawk Canyon somewhere. Look, Mrs. Madden. Who is this old Willie? Well, he has a mine up there. He's a strange old man. He's very eccentric. Well, what makes you think he had anything to do with this? Because in that last letter I got from Gil, but he mentioned something about old Willie pestering him again. I didn't pay much attention to it at the time. I still don't get the connection between your husband and this old Willie, Mrs. Madden. Well, you see, about two years ago, my husband made a business trip into that region. I went with him. This old Willie was hanging around a little store where we stopped for a cold drink. When he found out my husband was a mine broker, he became very excited. 
Said he had a valuable mind he wanted Gilbert to look at. Did your husband inspect Willie's mind? No. Because the storekeeper broke in and told us Willie's mind was worthless. Willie became furious and finally the storekeeper threw him out. I see. Did Willie threaten your husband, Mrs. Lamb? Well, he wrote a few crazy sort of letters to Gilbert accusing him of being a spy at what he called the big companies. Hmm. Mr. Blaisdell, have you ever heard of this old Willie? No, I haven't, but that doesn't mean anything. I'm not acquainted with anybody in that area. Jace, I sure think this old Willie is worth questioning. So do I, Sheriff. We'll head back to Black Hawk Canyon and see if we can find him. Right now, he sounds like a first-class murder suspect. In just a moment, we will continue with Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. It's the Silver Jubilee on NBC. Here's great news for all of you Western fans. Beginning next Friday on most NBC stations, Roy Rogers, the King of the Cowboys, and Dale Evans, the Queen of the West, will bring you the new Roy Rogers Show. Yes, beginning next Friday, be sure to listen for Roy Rogers, Dale Evans, and Trigger in New Adventures in Paradise Valley. It's the Roy Rogers Show, Friday, on most NBC stations. Be sure to listen. We continue now with Tales of the Texas Rangers, and tonight's case, Death Shaft, an authentic story from the files of the Texas Rangers. of routine, I checked up on Mrs. Madden's story of her visit to relatives in Kansas and quickly confirmed the fact that she was there during the period she had stated. Next, Sheriff Benson and I drove to the small general store in Black Hawk Canyon and questioned the storekeeper. Oh, Willie? Sure, I know him, Ranger. Comes in here once a month regular for supplies. Crazy to coot. Where does he live, Price? Oh, about 20 miles up the canyon. He's got a no-count mine up on East Rim. Of course, he thinks it's just chock full of ore. <laughs> Mr. Price, I want you to think back about two years ago. An incident involving old Willie and a mine broker named Madden is supposed to have taken place here in your store. Do you remember anything about it? Sure do. Willie started giving this mine broker the usual jaw wagon about his mine being valuable. <laughs> so I figured I'd better stick my ore in and tell the fellow Willie's mine wasn't worth a dad burn cent. What happened then? Oh, Willie flew off the handle in his crazy way, started spouting a bunch of threats and other loony talk, so I finally had to kick him out of the store. Well, Jay said sure checks with what Miss Madden told us. Yeah. Mr. Price, can you give us directions for finding Willie's place? We'd like to pay him a visit. Mm, well, pretty rough country up there. And well, we got horses in the trailer outside. Oh, well, in that case, you can make it all right. <laughs> Uh, you'll find the trail leading north off the road up ahead about um, five miles. Uh, stick to the trail until they cross a dry creek. Uh, and you'll see another trail taken off up the side of the canyon. And the second trail leads us to Willie's mine, huh? Yep. Of course, you uh, may not find him there. Why not? He's pretty skitterish about visitors. That's just why I want to pay him a visit. See if he's got anything to be skitterish about. <laughs> Should be just about there, Sheriff. Yeah. Why climb? Looks like we're directly across the canyon from Blaisdell's mine. Listen. Burl, must be Willie. We're close, all right. Once we get around this bend in the trail. Yeah. And it looks like some diggings up ahead there. And just take a look at that shack. Yeah. Some place. Galvanized iron, car paper, cardboard. I wonder what keeps it up. Probably that stove pipe sticking up through the center of the roof. Yeah. And it's smoking, too. Well, he must be home, all right. Oh, oh, charcoal. Oh, oh, boy. Would you look at the junk he's got hanging on the outside walls? Pieces of barbed wire, tin cans, keys, bottles. Looks like Willie's part pack wrap. Hmm. The door's open. Nobody inside. Inside looks like the outside. Only more so. I wonder where... Hold it. Hmm? Over there in the bushes. Yeah. Something moved, all right. Willie! Come out of there! Willie! Hey. Somebody's coming out, all right. 
sure don't look very friendly with that rifle. What do you fellas want? You throw that rifle down and we'll tell you. You got no call to come poking around my property. You're wrong there, Willie. This is Sheriff Benson and I'm Ranger Pearson. We want to ask you a few questions. Now drop that rifle and come over here. You think I'm going to tell you about my mind, don't you? Yeah, and I'm not. Now, just a minute, Willie. You want to get it away from me just like all the rest. You spies for them, that's what you are. You come poking around here. Trying what are you to... talking about, Willie? Spies for whom? For the big companies. They all want my mind because they know it's right smack dab on the biggest vein in the county. That's why they send spies snooping around here, like you two. I don't know, Jace. Willie... Have you ever been near the Blaisdell mine across the canyon from here? It's as good as this it is. Answer my question. Have you ever been near there? Yeah, maybe. How long ago? Oh, a couple of days. What were you doing over there? Patrolling. What do you mean, patrolling? Oh, I patrol all over. Got to watch for the spies. Hmm. Ever hear the name Gilbert Madden? He ain't going to never get my mind. All I need is a little money to operate. I asked huh? you a question, Willie. Did you ever hear of Gilbert Madden? You heard him, Willie. Yeah, maybe I have and maybe I ain't. You fellas come up here spying just like he... Just like who? Madden? <laughs> Think you're pretty smart, don't you? But you're not going to trap me. He had his chance to get me money for the mine, but he wouldn't. That why you killed him? Yeah. <laughs> yeah you think you're going to get me confused with your smart talk, don't you? Well, you ain't. I ain't got too much on my mind patrolling to worry about kidding anybody. Yeah? I wonder. We got a witness that you had a fight with Madden. And furthermore... Just a minute, Sheriff. What is it? Just happened to notice something hanging on the outside wall here. Just a bunch of old rusty keys. Yeah. But this one isn't as rusty as the rest. Well, let me see. Jeez. That key's the same make as the lock Blaisdell pried off the entrance to his mine. That's right, Sheriff. Come here, Willie. Hey, what you want? Where'd you get this key? Say, that's a good one. You want to trade some? Where'd you get it? I saved key. Quit stalling, Willie. Where'd you get it? Coming around here asking me all kinds of questions. You got no call to... I got that padlock back in my office, Chase. I'm sure interested to see whether this key fits it. So am I. Come on, Willie. Get your burrow. We're going to take a ride. Make me come down here with you fellas. You think I'm not wise, do you? Padlock's in my desk here. You get me down here while one of your other spies snoops around my mind, takes all samples. Here it is. Let's have it. Okay, now I'll try this key in it. Fits. Sure does. Well, I guess that does it all right. Uh, can I go now? No, Willie. I don't think you'll be going anywhere for quite a spell. The sheriff booked Willie, but we were unable to get any sort of coherent statement out of him. Finally, we locked him up and went back into the sheriff's office. Well, regardless of whether or not he gives us a confession, I suppose we could get a conviction all right. Maybe. Unless they find him mentally incompetent. Even so, they'll put him away. Yeah, that's just what I was thinking. It'd be pretty rough on him if he happened to be innocent, wouldn't it? You'd be... Innocent? Now, Jay... Yeah, I know. We have two witnesses to the fact that Willie threatened Gilbert Madden. That's right. Mrs. Madden and the storekeeper. But what clenches it is a padlock on Blaisdell's mind, Jace. That key we found at Willie's shack fits it. That's about as solid evidence as there is, seems to me. I wonder. What do you mean? A couple of things about this don't feel quite right to me, Sheriff. Well, what, for instance? Well, near as the lab can figure, Madden was murdered about eight months ago. That's right, last March. But the lock Blaisdell broke off the mine entrance was hardly rusty at all. And neither was the key we found hanging out in the open at Willie's shack. What's wrong with that, Jeez? Willie broke off the original lock when he hid Madden's body. But Madden died eight months ago, and that second lock couldn't have been on the hasp that long. Well, maybe Willie didn't put the lock on right away. Maybe later he got to worrying about somebody discovering the body, and, well, that's when he put it on. Sheriff, the time you're most worried about a body being discovered is right after you've killed a man, not several months later. Sure, that's the way a sensible person would react. But remember who we're dealing with. 
Old Willie, who's not exactly what you'd call a sensible man. I know, Sheriff. But then there's the part about the key hanging right out in plain sight at Willie's shack. Now, Jace, you said yourself Willie was pot pack rat. Remember all the other junk he had hanging around the shack? Sure I do, Sheriff. I also remember what Willie said when we showed him that key. Say, that's a good one. Just like he'd never noticed it before. What are you getting at, Jace? Maybe Willie did kill Madden, but it seems to me there's a bare chance he didn't. Then how'd he get that key? Oh, he could have found it, or it could have been planted there. That'd be awful tough to prove either way, Jace. Sure it would. But as long as it's a possibility, we're not closing the case. Come on, let's talk to Mrs. Madden and see if she can give us a line on anybody besides old Willie who might have a reason for killing her husband. We drove out to the Madden house, but Mrs. Madden was unable to give us any new information. She suggested we go through her husband's business records, which were in the spare room he'd used for an office. So the sheriff and I started in. But an hour later, the only things we found just made it look all the worse for Willie. Hmm. What do you got, Jase? Uh, a bunch of letters written on wrapping paper, addressed to Madden. Crazy, threatening letters. Who wrote them? You guess. Willie? Yeah, Willie. Listen, you better watch out. I ain't going to let you steal my mind. Mm. That's really all right. Rest of them like that? Yeah. All six of them. Well, Jace, it looks all the worse for Willie now. We've been through just about all Madden's records and papers. And these threatened letters are all we come up with. Yeah, and from the looks of it, Madden kept records of just about everything. Well, we might as well put these papers back, I guess. Okay. What do you got there? Oh, a pile of canceled checks. Hand them over and I'll stick them here in the drawer. Okay, just thumbing through them. I guess there's nothing here I... Hey. What is it? Sheriff, look at this check. It's dated two years ago. Hmm? Let's see. Well, what about it? It's just made out the case and signed by Madden. Yeah, but take a look at this pencil writing up in the corner. Pencil writing? Let's... Well, I'll be. So will I. Come on. Going to make an arrest? Not yet. I need more proof, and I think I know a way to get it. Just go along with whatever I say. Sure, Jason. Did you find anything that can help in Gilbert's papers, Range Pearson? I think we did, Mrs. Madden. You said you accompanied your husband on his business trip into the Black Hawk Canyon area two years ago. That's right. Why'd he go there? Well, just to size up the situation, find out what mines were for sale. I see. He didn't actually transact any business, though. No. Of course, this Willie wanted him to come up and see his mine, but when the storekeeper told us the mine was no good... Yeah. And you stayed right with your husband the whole trip? Yes. Okay. Thanks, ma'am. You say you found something in Gilbert's papers? Well, we don't know for sure, so I'd like to give you a receipt for these canceled checks. I want more time to examine them. Here you are. Cancel checks? Yeah. It looks like one of them's going to take the wrong man out of jail and put the right man in. Come on, Sheriff. I see. Well, I I'm glad to hear it. If there's anything more I can do... We'll let you know, Mrs. Madden. Goodbye. She's lying, Jason. Like a trooper. What now? We'll watch her. Have one of your deputies keep an eye on him. We don't want him to get away, but we don't want to pick him up yet, either. Okay, I'll call my office from the drugstore. I'll wait in my car around the corner. Meet me there. The sheriff made his call and rejoined me. We sat in my car waiting. And a little after dark, Mrs. Madden's car pulled away from her house heading out of town. We followed, keeping well back. Two miles out of town, she pulled off the highway, parked behind another car, and got out and headed into the brush. The sheriff and I worked our way slowly and quietly in the direction she'd taken should be around here somewhere. Yeah. Keep it as quiet as possible, Sheriff. Reckon she can out here to meet him? Looks like. Listen. Yeah. I hear him talking. Look, you're not clearing ahead. Yeah, let these up a little. You little fool. You must have overlooked something when you went through those records. No, I'm sure I didn't, Fred. I found the entry he made where you paid him for appraising your mind two years ago. I tore it out. There's nothing in those records to show the two of you knew each other. You're wrong there, man. You are... Hold it real steady, Blaisdell. Pierce. Yeah. So the two of you didn't know each other until I introduced you, huh? 
You've been in it together ever since you met two years ago. Clary, you little fool. You were tricked into coming out here so they could catch us together. They didn't have any proof of anything. I got proof right here in my pocket that you lied when you said you didn't know Madden, Blaisdell. Yeah, what kind of proof? Something you overlooked, Mrs. Madden. A check made out to cash. What? You didn't notice the pencil writing on it. Pencil writing? Your husband made a notation that the check was to cover expenses of a trip he'd made to appraise Blaisdell's mine two years ago. You told me you were with your husband the whole trip. So you lied about not knowing Blaisdell. Clara, you stupid... Blaisdell, little... right. you gotta listen to me. I, I didn't want any part of it, but Blaisdell forced me to. What's that? I'm in the clear. I was in Kansas when it happened. Blaisdell killed my husband. Oh, that's how you stick by me, is it? Why, you little... Hold it, Blaisdell. You're not going to get away free, Clara. I guarantee that. Sure, I killed Madden Ranger, but it was her idea. That's a lie. Uh, right from the start, it was her idea. How to go about it. Put the body in my own mind and change life. She's lying, Ranger. Plant the key at Willie's shack, pretend she and I didn't know each other. Then produce the body so she could collect on the insurance. All of it was her idea. You shut up. You shut up. I'm not half finished yet. Got a weird shot on me, will you? Wait till I get through spilling. Shut up, you little shut, shut up. You know, Sheriff, strikes me we've only got one problem left. What's that, Jace? Getting them to talk slow enough so a stenographer can get it all down. Come on, both of you. Fred Blaisdell and Clara Madden were indicted and placed on trial for the brutal murder of Gilbert Madden. For her part in the crime, Clara was sentenced to 50 years in the women's prison at Gorey. On the morning of May 3rd, 1942, Blaisdell was put to death in the electric chair. And now, here's the star of our show, Joel McRae. Hello, folks. First of all, we want to thank you kindly for the many wonderful letters and cards we received during the summer months. It's mighty heartwarming to know we have so many good friends. As a matter of fact, the Rangers themselves have received quite a few of your letters, too. And like us, they certainly appreciated hearing from you. I'm sure that most of you will recall reading about a great Texas Ranger captain who retired from active duty on July 31st of this year. Some of our stories have been based on his exploits. He's the famous Captain M.T. Lone Wolf Gonzalez, whose favorite guns are engraved with a code he has always lived by in his colorful career. Never draw me without cause, nor shield me without dishonor. Tomorrow, it'll be exactly 31 years since Lone Wolf was sworn in as a Texas Ranger. And as in the past year, so in the years to come, we are proud to have him as our technical advisor. Congratulations, Cap. See you next week, folks. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Joel McRae is currently seen starring in the Universal International Technicolor production, Cattle Drive. The cast included Tony Barrett, Bill Johnstone, Lamont Johnson, Ken Christie, Betty Lou Gerson, and Brad Brown. Technical advisor was Captain M.T. Lone Wolf Gonzalez of the Texas Rangers. This story was transcribed and adapted by Bob Reif, and the program is produced and directed by Stacy Keith. Hal Gibney speaking. It's the Silver Jubilee on NBC. Today, hear the glittering premiere program of The Big Show, broadcast from London and featuring Sir Lawrence Olivier, Fred Allen, Beatrice Lilly, and your unpredictable hostess, Tallulah Bankhead. Then join in the fun with the Phil Harris Alice Fay Show as they launch their new comedy season. And later, Theater Guild on the Air brings you Joseph Cotton and Joan Fontaine in Main Street by Sinclair Lewis. Ladies and gentlemen, the program You Can't Take It With You, starring Walter Brennan, is now heard at a new time and day. That's Friday on most NBC stations. Stay tuned for The Big Show and Tallulah on NBC, the national broadcasting company.